This is probably why you don't install one of these machines in a residential place or a shed in the first place, because of this very thing. G'day guys, Dan here. Today I'm gonna to take you on a bit of a journey of when we first received our first bit of large equipment, which is our CNC press brake. To put it into perspective, this thing weighs 11 and a half ton. It's 3.6 meters long, about 1800 mil wide, and it stands about three meters tall. Now, usually you install one of these bits of equipment into a commercial shed in an industrial estate or something of the like to make it easy to get in and out. Well, I didn't have one of them. So I went to the next best thing. I went and built a shed at the back of my residential house and installed it there. So let's get into it and I'll show you some of the uh, shenanigans that went on from there. All right guys, the first photo, and this is where the fun really started to begin. So straight off the bat, the only thing that would lift this uh, piece of equipment was a 25 ton uh, franner. Uh, for those of you who don't know what the franner is, you can see it in the photo, it's just a, a mobile crane. And that's one of the largest cranes that you can get of that type. And as you can see, it's an extremely, extremely tight fit. But on the next slide, you can actually see, you can see that we actually got it off the truck and it started raining. And it didn't stop raining for a week. So that's where it stayed. Um, while those works were being done or while it was sitting there, uh, we got a little bit of work done by just making sure that we prepared the area for where the uh, friend I was having to drive over to get into this back shed. So in this uh, photo, you can see the preparation works that we're still doing. Again, this is residential and you can see we're going through or we're going between two houses. Had to take the center dividing fence out. My neighbors were very kind and allowed me to actually use their side of the thing as well. If I didn't get that, this would never have happened. This one here is a funny one that I think you guys will love. I actually parked my ute in front of the press brake on the driveway so no one could come and steal the press brake. Hindsight, that was probably never going to happen because who's got the equipment to lift 11 and a half ton? But it was my baby. I wanted to look after it and make sure no one stole it. Aww. So the day came for us to uh, get everything ready for us to install this bad boy into that back shed. As you can see, the back shed's little. That's literally where we were gonna put it. So roll it all was down and we're ready. So after about, uh, after the rain stopped, we had to allow about four days of sunshine to try and dry, uh, dry the soil out because 25 ton plus 11 ton going onto soil it's never ever gonna end well, but we have to do it. So anyway, in this photo, you can see the front of the rocking up. Everyone's there, everyone's ready to go. So this one is the first casualty. This is just that front up driving up the driveway just to make sure it can get up there. And you can see that the concrete's already cracked and everything's letting go underneath the concrete. So this is when we knew that this was gonna be an interesting day. Me, I was hoping it's gonna be an interesting couple of hours, but it didn't happen that way. This one shows us uh, laying down a whole heap of metal plates. These metal plates are about 3.6 meters long by about 1.5 meters wide, and they're about uh, 16 mil thick. They weigh about, I'm gonna say about two ton. One and a half to two ton each. Um, and that's just to try and support the weight of the frana so it doesn't get bogged in this soft, soft soil. All right, guys, we're just reattaching. We got the press brake this far up the driveway, and so now they're going for a second grab after laying these plates, and we're going for the second run. This one, we're just, we've just attached all the chains to the press brake, and we're just slowly just raising and raising the press up, making sure everything just raises level to ensure that uh, no damage occurs. And 
bugger, I remember this all too well. Started moving up the uh, driveway, fully loaded. So just to paint the scene, the Frana has got the press brake, all 11 and a half time of it, lifted in the air, it's about four or 500 mil above the ground. It's slowly inching its way up, inching its way up the, the driveway, and all of a sudden, the front right hand side just goes, Kum! where it's broken through the concrete. And it hasn't broken through the concrete lightly. It's sunk about 300 mil. This is where I started, uh, yeah, I wasn't feeling too good from this moment onwards. Um, the crane driver that was driving it, he, um, his eyes are like saucepans. He was very, very nervous, but all credit to him. The guys that did this were absolutely amazing. They, they kind of pulled off the impossible, if I'm honest. Um, but yeah, as you can see, this is where the real fun begins and it only gets worse. <laughs> so we've had to uh, back the front of the back a little bit, lay some more plates, and we're gonna keep on laying more plates over that just to ensure that we don't crack any more concrete. Well, hope anyway. This is a close up of where that front right hand tire went through the concrete. To give a bit of perspective, that's about 300 mil that that frana has fallen into that, uh, in, into the ground. That's a long way to suddenly fall when you're fully loaded. I still get goosebumps looking at these photos now, guys. This was a, this was a very hairy moment indeed. So this just shows you a bit of a perspective of what we're actually looking at, guys. Um, yeah. Not much going on here, but way too used to the end photos. So, <laughs> it's never a good scene when you see slide marks, and especially when they're duallys, and when you know that that's a 25 ton frontner, fully loaded sliding. That's all I'm gonna say on that one. Guys, you can see this is a really tight fit. You can just see the, just the size of this frontner and the space that it's having to work in to, um, to get all this loaded up. Again, kudos to the guys, they did an amazing job. Crazy, crazy event. So guys, this one is where we pretty much laid all the plates and we're now gonna try and uh, get this press brake into its final position inside the shed. This photo probably says it all. Um, the tires are full of mud. <laughs> Uh, and there's water streaming down these plates. To paint a picture of what happened, when the Frenart was driving up on these plates and the plates were sinking into the ground, there was literally a stream of water, multiple streams of water that was coming up, seeping over the plates and running down the plates. This is how soggy and how sopping wet the ground is. So guys, this one here is just showing a bit of an overview of <laughs> the stage that we're at right now. Uh, in the bottom uh, left-hand corner, just off those plates, you can see those divots. I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, guys, finally, we're getting this monstrosity, this, this press break um, underneath the roof and starting to get it into position. Uh, as you can see here, we're trying to get in between the two metal beams on the roof and lower it down onto those skids. Those skids that you can see there, they're, I think they're 10 ton skids each, so that's what they'll handle. They're like caterpillar skids. Um, and they're just, they're very, very handy when you need to move real heavy equipment on flat surfaces. If you don't have a flat surface though, don't use them because they'll make your life a lot harder. All right, guys, here's another view of us. It's almost in. So we've just hooked it up and we're just slowly, slowly maneuvering into position. By this stage, um, it's probably about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon of the same day. So it's taken all day. Since about 7 a.m. till now, it's taken us just to get to this stage. So this is how much of an effort it was to get this in. 
All right, guys, this one we're just using the actual bull nose just to, just to just inch it into position. Um, it, we are so close here, um, and we're just inching it in uh, slowly but surely it's getting there. I'm breathing a massive sigh of relief as all the hard work now is done, kind of. Um, yeah, it, it was one hell of a day. You guys, I did mention uh, a couple of moments ago about those divots off the end of that plate. Well, this is what I mean by it. Um, the front, I went a little bit too far off the edge of the metal plate and it kind of sunk. And it sunk 400 mil um, to the point where it pretty much bulked itself. Um, again, it had no weight on it. It was just, just the weight of the franner itself. It just sunk. Um, I'm just gonna put a note here. This is probably why you don't install one of these machines in a residential place or a shed in the first place, because of this very thing. But if you were willing to go through that, then all power to you. So this one just shows the press brake literally almost in its final stages. It's in, uh, and now we're just gonna go through and we're gonna start leveling the machine up and just, we might, I think we have to slightly move it back another 100 mil, but that's pretty much where it's gonna stay, and then we can level the machine up. All right, guys, and there you have the press brake is now in its final resting position. The front uh, guard is on, everything's ready to go. Now all I have to do is just hook it up to power and make sure everything's calibrated. So after all that, this was the aftermath. The carnage, the damage, uh, it was something that I wasn't expecting. Would I do it again? Yes, but I would definitely pick when I'm going to do it, and I would definitely allow the, the uh, ground to dry out because, yeah, it's, it's like a bomb at the place, literally. All right, guys, here's a video now that you can have a look at. I made this the afternoon of when everything uh, came in and was installed. Um, at this point, I was a bit frustrated, but I was trying to find uh, the funny side of it. So check this out. I think I'll start where a 25 tonne got bogged. As you can see by the divots, that's about 400 mil down. It was uh, kind of impressive to see. Then we'll just see landscaping work done, as you can see. A lot of landscaping work. You can see where I now just need an excavator to come and just get rid of all this concrete. You can see rubbish, really rubbish. Nice little bog hole to get bogged in. A concrete bog hole, and that's about 350 mil deep where the crane was coming up. With the press lifted in the air, and it broke to the concrete. And so the front had dropped 350 mil instantly, which shocked everyone. Some more broken concrete. Another nice bog hole with some concrete thrown in. This is where it also broke through, but we put a metal plate over this one. Bog hole. This concrete's not too bad, surprisingly. It I got a couple of cracks through it, so neither here nor there. Some nice front of tire marks and got the end bog hole. So if you want to go forward driving with concrete involved and yeah. It's pretty crazy stuff. Alrighty guys, and there you have it. The gift that kept on giving. Now, you all might be thinking, Dan, was it worth it? Uh, if I'm gonna honor, uh, answer honestly, yes it was. 
The ability to be able to fold uh, all of our products in house uh, was extremely valuable and I can't say that it, it wasn't. Um, however, the clause is though, I would highly recommend that if anyone's ever thinking about doing this themselves, think real hard and real deep because it was a very, very expensive exercise. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that montage of all our photos and videos. Hope you guys loved it. See you all again next week and make sure you subscribe. Cheers guys.